Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at the Samsung Chromebook Plus. This is a two-in-one Chromebook that sells for about $449, so uh, under $500. Bucks. You get a nice touch display on here. You also have all of the configuration modes you would expect from a two-in-one, so you can put it into this multimedia mode. Uh, you've got a tent mode configuration and a tablet configuration. Uh, the screen is at a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, so it's not too bad in either orientation either. It's not too wide, although some folks might find it a little too square for their liking, but we'll be exploring all of that later. And by the way, did I mention it has a pen built in also? So we'll be seeing some of the things you can do with its built-in stylus. So it's got a lot of neat features. And of course, it runs all the Android apps that you might already have purchased on your phone or tablet. So there is a lot of versatility to this one, which we will explore later in the review. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's take a closer look at the hardware now. The first thing you'll notice when you take it out of the box and boot it is the display. It is a really, really nice display. 12.3 uh, inches, uh, 2400 by 1600 resolution at 234 PPI. Uh, in Apple world, they call that a retina display. Uh, for Android devices, they often call that a high DPI display. And what that means is that when you're looking at it, everything is very crisp and very sharp and very readable, almost looks like a printed page. It is a really nice display, especially for something as uh, affordable in my opinion, as this one is at under $500. It looks great. Uh, every bit as good as the MacBook display, the 12 inch MacBook display that will cost a lot more than uh, what you'll pay for one of these. Now, the display is a three by two aspect ratio, as I mentioned, which means that when you're in uh, tablet mode, uh, the screen isn't that wide when you have it in the portrait orientation like this. In fact, it's really nice to read uh, web pages and news articles like this because you don't have a very thin display like you might get with a traditional widescreen laptop. And it also looks pretty good good in the uh, tablet orientation also. But if you are playing a lot of movies on this device, it might look a little weird to use. Let me pull up uh, Netflix that I have running here. I'm going to go full screen on it real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. So what will happen here is that when you're playing back a uh, movie like this one where you've got a, a widescreen uh, image here, you'll have larger black bars in the top and bottom of the screen than you would on a, a traditional more widescreen 16 by 9 laptop. So that's the only real uh, issue you'll have with this display. But I really think the uh, ability to read in that portrait mode uh, without too narrow of a display outweighs whatever you might deal with on the movie side of things. I think you'll get used to this. It's a small display anyhow, and I think it looks pretty good. Now, this performs very well also. You saw that we had that Netflix thing running in the background while we were uh, browsing the uh, Google Play Store here. This has a new type of chip installed called a Rockchip OP1. So it's not an Intel device. It is powered by what's called an ARM processor, the same technology in your mobile phone and tablet. Uh, but these processors are being optimized for use in Chromebooks. And this is the first device to receive one of these processors. It runs at 2 gigahertz. Uh, it's very comparable in performance, as you'll see, to the Acer Chromebook R13, uh, I think it was, uh, that we looked at a couple of weeks ago that also had a similar technology inside of it. So these are new, uh, kind of a new breed of ARM processors that perform a lot better than you might remember them performing on these Chromebooks. So for $450, you're getting uh, some decent performance that will be better than what you might get out of a $200 Intel device. And again, we'll explore that performance in a few minutes. 4 gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage. It weighs 2 2.38 pounds or 1.08 kilograms, so very lightweight. It is an all-metal design. It's a very lightweight metal. It feels a lot like a magnesium, perhaps. It reminds me a little bit of some of the Surface devices because once it's on, and it doesn't get all that hot, but it does warm up, uh, the metal begins to feel like plastic. It's not very cool to the touch, and some people confuse it for plastic, but it is indeed all metal. Uh, there's some ports on here of note. So uh, this, like many other computers these days, is coming only with these multifunction USB Type-C ports. So what you can do here is plug in uh, your power or your data devices or both. And I've got uh, things like this one here that I tested with it. This is a USB hub, so you can get regular USB ports as well as Ethernet and HDMI and power all through a single cable here. And you just plug it in and you can get all those things working. However, I noticed that the HDMI port on this device did not work on this particular Chromebook, even though it works on a lot of my other USB Type-C devices. So uh, I did have to connect a just a regular USB-C to HDMI adapter to get that external display going on here. But you can get video out of these ports, but you may not have luck with one of these multifunction devices, at least this one. Uh, but this is the problem with USB Type-C. It can get very confusing these days. But bottom line is video, data, and power can go through that port as well as uh, the other one here on the other side. There is a headphone jack on it, so don't worry. Samsung is not getting rid of those. You also have a micro SD card slot over here to augment its storage. And it's nice because it's got a little door on here, so that card's not going to fly out by accident 
president. You pop the card in there. You can add, I think, up to 128 gigabytes of extra storage if you want to put some of your movies and music on there. You can store it on one of those cards very securely and safely. Volume rocker switches over here. You've got your power button there. That second USB Type-C uh, port is over there. And this is really cool because this little button here is pushed and then out comes a stylus. And you have some things that you can do with that, which we'll explore in a minute. So really cool. It has a place to live. You can put it in either way. So if I can put it in this way or I can take it back out, flip it over and put it in this way. It doesn't matter. As long as you snap it into place, it will be happy in there. I think there was a Samsung phone that uh, lets you put it in upside down and it broke the phone. This is not the case. This one goes in either way. Uh, the stylus does come with a few extra tips for you because I think these will wear down over time. Uh, so you do get a couple of extra tips in the box there. And I really just like how this stores because I have one of those iPad Pros with the Apple Pencil. I never have a place to put the pencil, so I never bring it with me because I don't want to lose it. Uh, here you've got a really elegant mechanism to uh, store that stylus on the road. The keyboard is very nice, although the keys are just a little too small for me. They're a little more cramped than I've seen on other Chromebooks. So that was the one thing that took a little getting used to. Not bad, but I would have liked to have more spacious keys. The trackpad is very nice, very responsive, and uh, in line with other uh, trackpads I have seen at this price point. So that works very well. The keyboard, though, is not backlit, so you will need to uh, get the display to reflect off of it or something like that. On the bottom here, you have some speakers, and this is really the only bad thing about this laptop is the speakers are pretty lousy. They're very tinny, they're very tiny, so they don't sound all that great. You do get decent stereo separation, but uh, if you are an audiophile, you will not enjoy the audio coming out of this. So uh, plug in that headphone jack there to your headphones and uh, go to town on that. So that is the overall hardware. Really nice stuff. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. All right, so we're going to start off with some 1080p 60 video from my YouTube channel here, and it looks like it's playing back pretty decently, but when you pull up the stats for nerds here to get the true picture, of what you're seeing, uh, it does seem to drop some frames every now and then. So we've been playing this now for about 15 seconds or so. Uh, we've dropped about 50 frames in the course of uh, that video playback. It's not all that noticeable because these frames are uh, dropping few and far between, but uh, nonetheless, it is not a perfect playback scenario for 1080p 60 video. 30 frames per second video runs fine. You saw how that Netflix video was playing. Uh, 30 frames per second content from uh, YouTube also works pretty well. But this is a better experience than some of those low-end uh, Intel Chromebooks provide. So I think for the price point, uh, it, this is a fine experience, and I think you may not even notice those drop frames uh, as you're watching them. Web browsing is also very nice on here. This processor combined with the wireless AC does make for a really good browsing experience. You can see how quickly this page just loaded up, and there's a lot of graphics and images on here. And this is a, a really surprising amount of performance given that uh, we are running with an ARM chip and not with an Intel chip on board. So it really is a, a great web browsing experience. And again, if you flip it into that tablet mode, uh, really nice to read on it. So you really get the best of both worlds, Android apps, a decent web browser, great screen uh, with something that you can also use as a traditional laptop also. The battery life on it is about 10 hours or so doing this kind of stuff. So if you're playing more video and maybe running some Android games that might uh, tax the processor a bit more, that will impact the battery life. But uh, casual web browsing using Google Docs and other things uh, should give you about uh, 10 hours or so. So definitely an all-day battery experience out of this with a uh, really uh, decent performance performing processor. Really good stuff on that front. And on the Octane Benchmark test, we got a score of 9,675. Of note is the Acer Chromebook R13, also running with a newer ARM chip optimized for Chrome OS. That one almost has an identical score. And you can see here, compared against some of the Intel devices we've tested here on the channel, uh, these ARM devices perform much better. That never was the case in the past. Uh, now it is. You can get a pretty reasonably priced Chromebook that uh, performs where you would expect it to for about four or $500. And I'm uh, quite pleased with the performance overall. Let's take a look now and see how the stylus works. All right, so let's pop that stylus out and uh, take it out of the case here and see what happens. Now, the second you do that, you will get a couple of different options that you can use the stylus for. So the first thing is magnifying glass mode that I wanted to show you. Now, you see here, if I put my finger on the screen, it just thinks I'm uh, trying to scroll back on the web page. But when I take the stylus out, it will now magnify portions of the screen. So it's able to discern the difference between uh, your finger touching the screen and the stylus. So you can see here, that happens. If I do this, that happens. That's pretty neat. I'll go back down here to the stylus menu. There's also laser pointer mode. So if you want to uh, 
Uh, maybe if you're doing a presentation as you're projecting a mirror of your screen, uh, you can use this to uh, do some uh, pointing for your audience. That's kind of a neat thing. Uh, you also have the ability to capture regions on the screen and save them to your Google Photos drive. So you can just do a selection like that. It'll then uh, drop it into the folder or you can copy it to the clipboard or I can click here and go over to Google Keep, which is uh, Google's uh, note-taking application. So you can see it's dropping that in there and then I can go and maybe select the, I think this is the highlighter here and uh, oh, that's a pen, but you can see I can start drawing and marking up this document here and uh, then saving the image again. So you do have some uh, pretty cool note-taking features built in from the Google side of things. Uh, they also give you an Android app that Samsung provides that uh, will allow you to draw things like this scene here. I could never draw something like this, but uh, you can draw over it if you want <laughs> with, some, uh, with some stuff like that. It also has a decent um, wrist detection here also. So if I'm uh, resting my wrist on here, you can see I'm only getting the pen action and it's not picking up my wrist as I'm uh, drawing on the screen. So uh, really good wrist detection. And again, it can discern the difference between uh, this stylus and fingers on the screen. And there's also a little bit of pressure sensitivity on the pen as well. So I'm in that Samsung Android app that came with the tablet. And if I draw just a light line here, you can see that it doesn't uh, get all that thick. And then when I push it down harder, I get a much thicker line. So it does have some degree of smarts here as to what you're trying to draw. I am not an artist. I don't really use this kind of stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think if you are looking to draw on this, you might want to consider uh, going with a more traditional computer and drawing tablet that's better suited for this kind of stuff. But uh, for a, a relatively inexpensive tablet. This is not too bad of an experience. There's a little bit of lag here when you're drawing on the screen. As you can see, it kind of chases my pen around a little bit, but uh, not all that bad for, again, for the price point and the fact that this is a Chromebook. Uh, this sensitivity did not work in Google Keep, so I would imagine this is going to be something that works on an app-by-app -app basis, although I do imagine a lot of Android apps that uh, support styluses will also work on this tablet. And speaking of Android apps, this will come with the ability to install Android apps right out of the box. You don't have to go into any crazy developer mode or do anything uh, to get this implemented. It just works when you first boot it up. You'll see the Google Play Store on there and you can go through and uh, find apps that you've already purchased or uh, buy new ones if you want. Uh, typically, the apps that you buy for your tablet or your phone will also run on this. You may have a bunch of things you've already bought and own uh, that will carry over and uh, play back on here just fine. There will be some compatibility issues with different types types of apps. So uh, there are certain things you might want to stick to the web version of, like Netflix, for example. But uh, by and large, you'll find a lot of compatibility. And one thing I like to do is try out uh, game emulators. So I have uh, MAME here. It's an arcade game emulator running with uh, Street Fighter Alpha 3 here. And it's working really nicely. And I'm also able to uh, connect up Bluetooth controllers to this also. So those game controllers will work on the Android side of things. I did have to remap the controls a little bit. Not a perfect scenario just yet, but uh, pretty darn close to one. And it's certainly improving uh, quite well. And uh, the performance out of this emulator, even running with a, a pretty high-end arcade game, is running really, really nicely. So that is a Samsung Chromebook Plus. This one really surprised me. I'm really quite pleased with the quality of this for the price. You know, we often think of Chromebooks as being $200 devices, but uh, to be honest with you, 450 bucks for what you're getting here feels like a good price, especially because of the display and uh, just how well this works as both a laptop and a tablet. I could see myself uh, really using this in both modes, given the fact that the uh, display works really well in portrait mode for reading and whatnot. And it's not all that heavy and bulky when it's folded around in this mode either. It is kind of big, but it doesn't feel as uh, cumbersome as other uh, similar devices have felt to me over the years here. So this is a nice device, and I think if you're looking for a Chromebook and you want to spend a little bit more than the, than the baseline, I think you'll be quite pleased with this one. They've done a nice job with this, integrating the stylus, great display, uh, really good performance, even though it is an ARM-based device, and uh, you have all the Android stuff you could possibly want to run on here now, too, which gives it a lot more flexibility than we've seen out of Chrome OS in the past. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.